Be so good as to read once more the chapter of the windmills. Chapter 13. Windmills, remember, if you fight with them, may swing round their huge arms and cast you down into the mire. Or up among the stars. Have you ever thought to yourself, as you utterly curb stomped your opponent, that if you and your team can't win with this, then you deserve to have your butts kicked, and then you couldn't figure out where you heard that quote before, and then you remembered it was Herman Goering at the start of the Battle of Britain, and you kind of cringed inside and hurried along with your game before you hopefully didn't jinx yourself with your stupid Nazi thought quote? <sighs> Me, too. This is Jason Reed Pratt, author of An Absolutely Failed Fantasy Series. Fortunately, I don't always fail so hard in my non-real life. Unfortunately, I am playing the Army of the Republic of Vietnam for the first time, which doesn't bode well, in a full-team co-op multiplayer match of Mark Hermann and Volker Runke's Fire in the Lake, published by GMT Games. Fortunately, this being a full-team co-op, I don't have to worry about also beating my erstwhile ally, the United States of America, played by Rich from the Crisis Grogs. Unfortunately, this is a game about the Vietnam War, and I'm playing Arvin. I mean, we're winning. We are definitely and essentially winning. This is not in dispute. No one can reasonably dispute this. Uh, turn 24. Search and Destroy is current, and Tan Hua is upcoming. Rather than take this event, which would hamstring us for the rest of the game every time we fight out in the countryside, VC Larry, up first this turn, takes the full op with special instead. Rally and Subvert, which means I can kiss a few of my cubes goodbye and maybe some patronage score. Look, anyone getting into an episode 13 grand finale either knows how everything works now, or you should be checking on prior episodes for game mechanics, so from now on I'm mostly just showing results with some commentary. See, there's the thing. If we can't get those bases out, Larry can search his specs back onto the map as fast or faster than we can remove them. But he is bleeding money to do it, so by attrition he should run out soon. Larry subverts some of my troops off the board and ticks me down a notch on score. Annoying, but far from fatal. NVA Dave, at second initiative, now has the opportunity to play the Search and Destroy against us, but he passes. Cash up one to 29. I was not expecting that. Turn 25. Tan Hua, now current. New upcoming event, Economic Aid. Tan Hua was a bridge spanning the Song Ma River at the north end of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and I wrote a nice little essay about this originally, about heroic attempts to destroy it and heroic attempts to keep it functioning. But this is the grand finale episode, so I'll skip this and other history aside henceforth. The story is interesting and impressive, along with the whole history of the trail, so I recommend looking it up. I plan to invest in some books about it someday. NVA Dave takes the shaded Tran Hua flavor, improves the trail to 4, and picks up 3 times the trail value equals 12 cash, plus current cash 29 equals 41 cash. That's equivalent to 123 Arvin cash, which is even farther off the table than ever before. I mean, he's about halfway to double the equivalent cash value limit on the board. Having the trail pumped up to four will give Dave free marches up, down, on, and off the trail with as many pieces as he wants and as far as he wants to go, if he takes a march operation. But with NVA taking the event, that gives U.S. Rich the opportunity to play a full Operation Plus Special. U.S. Trains and, again, airlifts. Turn 26. 
Mathematically, based on our non-historical shuffle, the third coup could show up any time from this point on, but this time there's less than a 7.7% .7 chance. Economic aid is now current, and Henry Cabot Lodge is now upcoming. I don't dare leave Team North alone for another couple of turns, and I need to set up the U.S. for at least threatening a full wipeout strike on Tay Ninh. So, for me, a full sweep op plus transport special. If VC Larry wants to take the econ event, that's fine with me, I guess. First, the transport special mission. Unfortunately, with my current regime leader, my transport options are greatly limited. Now the sweeping. I'm starting to run a little thin on cash to take actions with. This could be my last big operation until the next coup, whenever that is. Maybe as far off as turn 40. Yeek! Under the circumstances, VC Larry decides the best move, I agree, is to pay for a rally. VC cash down 1 to 4, and flip all his Tane inspects back to hidden. I couldn't really avoid this, but I figured this would force him to waste a turn until Rich and I could sink our operations. This ends the turn. Turn 27! Discarding economic aid, Henry Cabot Lodge is now active. Almost a 15.4% chance for the third coup, and the new upcoming is... LURP! Yes, yes! <laughs> However, that's upcoming, and whether there will be anything left over the border to LURP remains to be seen. Because this turn, NVA starts with the initiative, which could not be prevented. And so, Dave begins. A full march operation with special. With a trail value of four, he can move as many pieces as he wants onto, across, and off the trail, onto his chosen target areas at no cost. And remember, he has the equivalent of 123 Arvin cash right now. None of which he has to spend to do any of this. Bombard will be his special mission, also free. There will be three target areas due to his long gun's special capability, which adds more artillery to shoot with. For his third target, however, Dave removed a U.S. troop from Kwong-10 to casualties, and I don't think any of us caught that he could not do this, because he doesn't have a group of three infantry either in Kwong-10 or in an adjacent space, keeping in mind that roads count as spaces and so can divide provinces, so Artie cannot Weirdly enough, bombard over roads, but artillery can bombard over towns going around roads, so to speak. But he doesn't have three cubes to shoot with that way either. And just like that, total newbie NVA Dave, who back earlier had had most of his pieces wiped off the board and a score of literally one point, but who bided his time rebuilding his infrastructure until an opportune moment, with one move, has dominated the game. U.S. Rich could take the event, which would only give me an extra 20 in aid someday. So instead, he creates a limited assault in Tay Ninh as the second action of this turn. Unfortunately, he cannot add my troops to the assault, because my cash has reached my econ limit. I can spend it, but he can't, and he'd have to spend my cash to add my troops to the assault. Also, unfortunately, at some point in our vassal game, apparently during Rich's previous turn, when he trained and airlifted some pieces around improperly and then made corrections, he, or the module, lost one of his infantry divisions. The difference is that in the vassal module, there are only three U.S. infantry cubes in Tay Ninh, not four. I'm not sure it would make any difference to the end of the game, but eventually I decided for this replay that I had better show what we thought we were playing with, and what the module thought we were playing with, since it calculates things automatically using existing pieces somewhere. So I'm deleting the fourth cube from his pile here. For the rest of the game, well, almost the rest of the game, because it will show up again eventually, U.S. Rich will accidentally have only 39 total cube. After running the fight, no one has control in the province now. 
Team North ties us 13 to 13 pieces, but the NVA has to outnumber everyone else combined, including the VC, to have control. This ends the turn, bringing us to turn 28. Long Range Recon Patrol, or LERP, now active. There's now a 23.1% chance, rounded up, of the third coup triggering, but burning bonds is upcoming. VC Larry has first initiative and decides he does not want his NVA partner to make him look wimpy, so it's Tet Offensive time! Notice that this effectively replaces the current event, so Larry also protects NVA Day from a possible ripping. And no other pivotal event can trump it. Consonant with NVA Day's surge, more or less, this is, more or less, the best possible time to play it. So far, maybe. First, the VC must execute free terror ops in all spaces with at least one underground blue spec. Notice that he can't put terror in Qianzhang because all those specs were exposed already. Tet Stage 2. Place a total of six VC pieces spread across any cities. He only has bases remaining and available, but those do count as pieces, so the first four pieces he places must be his remaining bases. After that, he can teleport specs and bases around the map for placing pieces in cities. But Larry, playing as VC, doesn't remember he can now move a couple of specs or even bases around to cities, with no more pieces available. Uh, my notes indicate Larry might have been out of town and passed Tet resolution to Dave, who lacked Larry's experience. Stage 3. All Team North specs on the board must activate and attack. Specs from both factions combine together for dice rolling purposes. Specs that activated in order to throw terror can and must still be part of the attacks troops cannot be part of the attacks. These attacks involve dice rolls, but I'll skip along to show the results. It's important to keep in mind that whenever each US troop and or base is destroyed in a direct fight like this, they take out one attacking piece with them. US Special Forces do not have this defensive attrition capability, nor do any of my Arvin pieces. The Tet Offensive didn't change the score much, not like the NVA's recent March Bombard, but it did whittle off some US pieces to casualties and several of my pieces to available. My turn now at second initiative. I can and will play a full op with Special. Also there's no reason for me to try and pass for the next event since the NVA will just take it to keep me from getting it anyway, whereas this way maybe he'll feel like he has the freedom to ignore the coming event. There is no real option for me. I have to do an assault op with a transport special mission. Transport first from Qin Jiang. As a special mission, these moves cost nothing. Two assaults. Now I'm kind of wishing I had taken the economic aid event earlier. My police divisions, the orange cubes, can help with control out in the country, but they can't help attack in the boonies. They can only attack in cities or on roads. In Tay Nin, the rules require Team South assaults to target red cubes before any north specs. So... This ends my turn, and despite his surge, NVA Dave ended up only increasing his score by three points. But his buddy VC Larry came back hard. Moreover, now that the NVA are in country, they'll be constantly giving us grief until and unless we can flush them out. Yet, Rich and I have managed to blunt some of that tidal wave already. I can't unfortunately say the tidal wave is totally spent yet, since Dave still has a bunch of troops and some specs infesting South Vietnam now, but fortunately the Tet Offensive forced him to activate all his Special Force guerrillas, so they'll be kind of useless for a little while. That catches us up pretty much for turn 29, where, unfortunately for us on Team South, Larry's Tet Offensive cancelled any possibility of us striking out with this long range recon patrol card. It has to be discarded now along with the pivotal event. The new current card will be Burning Bonds, with almost a 31% chance of the third coup 
triggering now, but it's stunning. NVA and US eligible, NVA up. NVA Dave doesn't want to take the event, which is odd as it would have instantly struck off six points from the US score and hurt my ability to harvest cash in the next coup. But rather than risk the US in the second initiative, getting the event or getting a full operation, Dave takes the option of a full op with no special. Specifically, he's going to do a full rally. This makes sense because we smacked a lot of his troops off the map once he marched them in, and moreover, Dave has quite literally ungodly amounts of cash to burn now. Once he puts most of his specs back onto the board, NVA ends his turn. US Rich can only do a limited op or pass. He passes, Arvin Cash up 3 to 12, much appreciated. This completes the turn, discarding burning bonds. Turn 30! The current card is Da Nang. Almost a 38.5% chance for the third coup. No, it's McNamara line. We can swing that later. It'll be a momentum card against the NVA. U.S. Rich takes the Da Nang event, which represents Lyndon B. Johnson sending the Marines into Da Nang in 1965, bringing three U.S. troops into Da Nang City directly from out of play, and another three troops into the city from available. This reduces the U.S. score by three points to 41. VC Larry has second initiative this turn and can play a full march op plus special tax. This might be his first march operation of the game. Three march area targets, two of which are lines of communication, so they cost him nothing, taking VC resources down only one cash to three. This Y leg of Route 14 is the only loc in the game connecting two cities and also a town. That controls a lot of access, especially when one of the cities is Saigon. This road is also Route 14, which Larry is entering through the null space of the town here. And Saigon. One hidden and two active specs from Quang Duc. Two active and three hidden specs from Ben Thuong. All his hiddens must activate. He was moving too many pieces in at once, so they were going to activate anyway. This is why Larry sent in as many active specs as he could. Arvin loses six population control, so just like that, my score dives six points to 30. I've been worried for a long time that he was going to invade Saigon from Quang Duc and or Ben Thuy, and now my fear has come to pass. At least Larry can't benefit from control of Saigon, but denying my control will allow him more leeway to operate in the city, turning the population against me if I can't stop him. And those potential 12 points would easily push Larry over his Viet Cong goalpost of 36 points. His special tax mission has two targets. Larry remembers that tax profits him twice the population level this time. Turn is completed and Donang discarded. Turn 31, McNamara line is current. Phew, a 46.154% chance, round it up, for the third coup to turn over US Press Corps. At this point, only an early coup might save us. NVA Dave has the first initiative again and decides he still doesn't have enough troops on the map, so he runs a full rally op again with an infiltrate special. Five rally targets, and the order in this case is important. NVA cash down five to 31. Around this time, I noticed in my notes that Dave should have four cubes in Southern Laos, so I'll add a pair as I go by. They should be from the parrot's beak, which has too, too many, according to my notes. Infiltrate targets are the Parrot's Beak and Central Laos. Now for my harsh choice. I can't stop VC Larry next turn from taking a full action or the event, which would nuke a bunch of US pieces out of the casualty box to out of play. But if he doesn't take the event, I'll be stuck, as I am now with the limited op, and he'll have had the ability to punch me and or the US without us first doing at least a little against him to mitigate the punch. It's important for me to remember, however, the VC cannot attack anywhere right now. He'll have to rally them back to Hidden first to be of any use for most purposes. 
and he can't rally them in Saigon at all due to the support still there. So he'll have to run a terror op first. In the end, out of six or seven viable strategic possibilities, none of them immediately great, I'm going for an assault on Tainin. One deciding factor is that any offensive action here can be supported by the U.S. in rolling effects, maybe. So, Arvin limited operation, assault, Tainin being the only target. My eight troops remove three red cubes. I have to, I have to remove those first. Um, somehow I don't have three red cubes on the board, but my notes say that Dave does have them there. And then one after spec. This cost me three cash for the operation. If you notice the board looking a little different just now, that's because I paused for 10 or 15 minutes to double check my tabletop simulator map versus my log file map from the Vassal and made some TTS adjustments. Among some other things, I found the missing US troop. Turn 32. The current card is US Press Corps. Solidly more than a 50-50 coin toss of the third coup being turned. Huh. Well, the name sounds like it should be a coup, but it's Nguyen Chan T. VC Larry, after some deliberation, chooses an attack operation. He wanted to flip his specs over in Saigon, but the act of support there is messing up his options. Frankly, I'm just as glad, since if he took the event, he would really hurt U.S. Rich. But Larry chooses an operation with no special to prevent Rich from getting the event, which would allow the U.S. to bring more troops onto the map from out of play, and pretty much anywhere. Three attack targets. The VC cash is down from five to two. He's almost broke. Five specs are attacking in Quang Tri. Larry rolled a three, removing the final U.S. troop to casualties. U.S. defensive attrition power removes one spec. The Viet Cong have four specs attacking in Tay Ninh, and he needs a four or less to win, but he rolls a six. Team South has had some bad dice rolls so far in the game, but this is a big defensive win for us. There are six or more specs attacking in Saigon, to say the least, so Larry's attack automatically succeeds, sending two Arvin troops, per Larry's choice, back to availability. U.S. Rich's turn must be either a limited op or a pass. He chooses a limited assault in Tay Ninh. His three troops remove three VC specs, then he pays three Arvin cash down to what should be six, because he hasn't fixed my mistake, to add my troops. Uh, this really is a problem, because he should not be spending my cash, but we haven't noticed this yet in the game, and here we are. I have enough to send home the remaining spec, and enough to roll chances for the under hidden bases. Due to them being underground, we need more than three on each roll, and any failure stops the assault. Fortunately, the dice remain on our side, and we roll a 4 and a 5. The VC score goes down to 25 for two bases sent back to available. Arvin adds, Arvin adds 6 aid for each base we remove, even when teaming up to follow a U.S. assault, so aid goes up to 71. Again, this really should not have happened. Uh, he really should not have been able to do this because my economy is too weak, but we didn't notice it at the time. I'm having to replay it here because this is what happened during the game. I'm just pointing out it's it's a it's a fault. It, it it is illegal what we just did. Turn 33. Nguyen Chan T is current. There's a 61.54 percent chance for the coup now, and it's Ply May upcoming. Arvin and then NVA have the initiative. Essentially, I cannot stop the NVA up north or even slow them down, but I can help slow them down in the south and work on securing the area. Two trained targets. Arvin cashed down six to nothing. I'm now dead broke. And two raid targets at no cost. Ken Fong. I activate my spec and remove two red cubes. And Ken Zhang. I move two specs in from Kanto. I activate one of them and remove two blue specs. This brings my score up two population points to 32 for control. NVA has second initiative and takes the card event in lieu of a limited operation. I'm glad I bluffed him into this, because if he had passed and picked up one cash, he would have been in a position to exploit the upcoming card with VC Larry in a hideous double team of event and full op special. As it is, he can and does still replace two Arvin police in Hui with two hidden VC specs, dropping Arvin control points by 2 to 30. This sucks, but I would rather be consolidating the richer lands to the south, so I accept the swap. The deduction of my patronage, per the card text, by 4 is a harder pill to swallow, also reducing my score by 4 to 26. Turn 34. Ply May is current. There's a 69% chance of the third coup. Not totally sure, but an increasingly good bet. No, it's it's Kessinger. Upcoming. 
BC and then US have initiative. BC Larry takes the Tay Nguyen offensive flavor of the text, passing control for his turn back over to NVA Dave. The shaded flavor of this event allows one free march operation for NVA pieces from any spaces outside South Nam, and indeed as long as the trail value is above zero, there can be multiple march targets for free as if the trail is four, which it is. So he can march any units out of the trail provinces, or North Nam per card text, for free onto any adjacent spaces. And then in one selected space, even if not one of the marching targets, he can ambush or otherwise attack with any NVA pieces. His ambush spec doesn't even need to be hidden. A point the card does not specify, although the rules spell this out for the card. This event march is also allowed during a monsoon before a coup. However, the only march target NVA Dave chooses is Ken Fong. Eight cubes from the beak, leaving one cube, one spec, and two bases, plus two cubes via the trail from southern Laos, leaving two cubes in a base, plus 11 cubes from central Laos, leaving one cube, one spec, and two bases. That's 22 NVA cubes, taking away two Arvin control points down to 24, and granting two NVA control points up to 12. The subsequent attack, per the event card, allows removal of 11 pieces, which eliminates every Team South piece in the province, including the U.S. base, going to casualties. The base nixes off one red cube to NVA available, leaving 21 after the fight. Actually, one of our pieces should have been left, but no one caught this mistake in the log file, so for now I'm treating it as a total wipe unless I find a, cor a correction later. As horrible as this is, the event gives U.S. Rich a chance to play a full operation plus special. He declares a sweep op. The only selected sweep target? Quang Tri. Eight cubes from Da Nang via the Route 1 loc. This activates all five red specs in the province, but it does not affect control yet. Airstrike is the special focused on Saigon to remove six VC specs. All the specs there are now being active, although Larry swarmed in so many that a few still remain. This reduces support to passive, dropping US score six population to 35. We get control back though, for now, with a flood of NVA cubes nearby. So for so and so Arvin score goes up six pop to thirty. This ends the turn. Turn thirty-five. Kissinger is now current. One of the next four cards must be the coup, but not that one. It's Sinahook. The NVA and then Arvin inf have initiative. NVA, not too surprisingly, chooses a full march operation plus a bombard special. Three targets, NVA cash down three to 24. Quang Tri removes two cubes from southern Laos. Actually takes back a neutralized control, but I didn't video that, so no change actually. Five cubes from Kian Phan to Khan To. Gains an NVA control. Scores at one population to 13. Reduces my score by one. And eight cubes from Kian Phan to Saigon. Gaining NVA control and score up six population to 19. Reducing Arvin control score by the same six pop back to 24 again. This puts NVA Dave past his goalpost. Three target spaces for his th three bombard special. Quang Tree sends one US cube to casualty. Hui sends one Arvin police to available. And Saigon sends one police to available. Finally, it's my turn. <laughs> Frankly, it's time to call for reinforcements, or past time, since I should have done this a turn or two earlier when I had the better chance. Consequently, I pass, doing my turn quickly, gaining three resources, up to three from zero, which will give me a little something to work with, and I get first initiative on the next card anyway. Turn 36. Xianuk. This next card is not the coup, it'll be one of the next two, but it's the 559th Transport Group. Time to Vietnamize. Several turns earlier than I would have preferred, but too late will be too late, and no one can trump it. Plus 12 to aid but only up to the max of 75. This is why I would have preferred for it to go back some so I could punch that 8 up again. Plus 12 Arvin cash, up from 3 to 15. All of my out-of-play pieces go to available. And I can put 4 cubes anywhere on the map. 
other than North Vietnam, which is inherently impossible for Team South to ever enter. Now, I think I'm being clever here, so I put one troop into each of the three empty trail areas, and then one police into Tay Nin, in case we get a chance to pacify there. Hopefully, you'll see why this is a catastrophic mistake, but if not, don't worry, I'll explain it very soon. This ends my turn. The coup has to be coming soon, though, and the North Vietnamese are near to winning. Can I and my big, round-eyed ally hold them off long enough to get my forces on the board in enough numbers to make a difference in my hopes for dominating southern Vietnam under my heel for generations to come? Uh, I mean, freedom and democracy and Coca-Cola's for everyone? I mean, if you're looking at the video time, you probably know the answer to this. But let's see if Eagle Land can lay enough firepower down to dissuade the communist hordes. Thanks to my pivotal event, U.S. Rich can run a full op plus special, and he decides on a sweep plus an airstrike. The sweep targets are Quang Duke, well really there's just one sweep target, uh, one U.S. troop from Ply Ku crossing the road or through the town. Since the terrain is jungle, one division is not enough to flip the hidden spec here. Airstrike targets, Quang Tree, well there's only one target. <laughs> there's all six cubes uh, are being taken from Quang Tree and they're sent back to available. Envia control down 2 pop to 17. Coin control up 2 pop to 25. Airstrike reduces support one notch to passive opposition, increasing the VC score 2 pop to 27. That ends the turn. Turn 37. My pivotal event and whatever it displaced are discarded. 559th transport group activates. It's heads or tails whether this is the coup or the next card will be... It is Young Turks. The third coup will be next turn. And monsoon conditions happen now. What I was gambling on, since I figured U.S. Rich would airstrike where he did, shifting the NVA score back a notch, and since my four cubes weren't going to change enough control anywhere else, was that we'd either have another couple of turns for me to rally more control onto the board, specifically in Saigon, where I can always rally cubes, or else that the coup would turn up before NVA Dave crossed his goal again. In that case, I was guaranteed, by putting troops on the trail, thus taking control of those spaces, to erode his trail control by a lot. Sure, I'd lose those troops, but I'd be rallying them back in pretty quickly with my influx of coming cash from USAID. Anyway, they do get their turn, but notably the NVA cannot march, because the monsoon prevents all marching, so he can't use that to spread his control any farther. Feeling safe for another round of turns, I sit back to watch the newbie NVA Dave fumble around. So NVA plays a full rally plus special instead. Five rally targets. NVA cash, now down to 19. Saigon. You can only put one spec here. Kian Fong. Only one spec possible here. Kanto. Only one spec possible here despite the VC base, because that means nothing when you're doing an NVA rally. Parrot Speak. I expect him to bring six, two bases plus four trail. He brings only five instead. Hmm, I wonder why. Kwong Tree. He brings in all five possible specs, one base plus four trail. Well, that puts all his specs back on the board, dang it. But, uh, wait. Um, that gives him 11 pieces in Kwong Tree. And we have only 9 pieces! This flips control back from coin to NVA again. Arvin score down 2 pop to 23. NVA score up 2 population points to 19. With the coup upcoming, and with no way for Team South to do anything to counter this move, the game effectively ends here. VC Larry won't do anything to mess with this score, since this is a full team game, and Team North only needs one of its players past the goalpost to win. NVA Dave and VC Larry have cooperatively beaten US Rich and Arvin Me. Think about this. For most of the game, VC Larry fought a frantic delaying action, trying to keep both Rich and I from passing our goalpost. NVA Dave sat over the border, building up operational cash and putting pieces on the board. Even then, thanks to good and lucky card play by Rich and I, 
they've had to come back from a score of literally only one point and with most of his pieces blasted off the board. And NBA Dave still came back with Larry running interference to win it all for Team Kami. This wasn't only Dave's first game of Fire in the Lake. I think it was his first game in the coin rule system at all. And he bossed it like a pro. To be honest, we didn't even realize he had won because all of us forgot that Team North only needed one player past the post to win. So we did continue on into the fifth coup and into the round of turns after that. But NBA Dave still held on despite being punched back a bit in our struggle over Saigon. And Cannon Den, the winning score from Team North with VC Larry's assistance during the fifth coup. Thus ended our second game as a group. The first being a campaign of Time of Crisis, which I may get around to tabletopping someday, now that TTS Module 4 has arrived. But for now, Dave and Larry have won. Amen, 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 amen,